Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG Brazil, and today we shall talk about register location in SSA form programs. That's a beautiful intersection between static single assignment form and register location. Consider this program. Do you remember it from a few classes ago? Do you remember what's main reg for this program? Main reg, if you recall, is the minimal number of registers necessary to compile a program. You can see the live ranges of variables on the right side of the figure. From these live ranges, we can build the interference graph on the left side. This graph is a pentagon. A pentagon has some interesting properties. It's the smallest graph whose chromatic number is larger than the maximum click, for instance. We need at least three colors to color it, and that's the minimum number of registers that we need for the program on the right. Let's now try to allocate variables for the same program, but this time in SSA form. Would you like to draw this program on a piece of paper, then run live and as analysis on it? After that, if you want, you can even try to build its interference graph. That's the result of Leibniz analysis, for a start. Tell me, do you think that variable C1 and C2 interfere? I mean, they are here and here, for instance, C1 and C2. Do you think they interfere? What about E1 and E2? Would you like to try to draw the interference graph of this program? You can stop the video and then draw the graph. You can see the interference graph on the left side of the figure. And C1 and C2, they don't interfere, neither do E1 and E2. So what's the chromatic number of this graph? We can color the graph with two colors. That's more or less easy to see. The graph is bipartite. Every bipartite graph can be colored with two colors. And then we can map this coloring to the program. You can see the coloring on the right side of the figure. But now we have a problem. We need to implement the phi function. And variables are now mapped onto registers. How can we do it? Notice that if the program flows comes from the right side of the branch, then we would need to swap the contents of registers R1 and R2. How can we do it? We could use an auxiliary variable, but then we would need three registers like before. Is it possible to implement the swapping without the auxiliary location? Well, it certainly is. We can use the good old XOR trick to do the job. XOR let us swap the contents of two registers without an auxiliary location. You can see the pattern on the right side of the figure. We can switch any two locations using this pattern of three XOR instructions. Cool, is it not? If you don't know this trick, I advise you to stop the video and run a few examples on paper. That's beautiful like magic. Anyways, by mapping the original program to SSA form and running register location, we get a program that we can compile with one register less. And there is more to it. Register location in SSA form yields the minimum number of registers in polynomial time. We will see that we can use polytime algorithms to find the main reg for programs in the SSA format. The fact that we could use less registers in this example once we run register location in SSA form is not a coincidence. The SSA form program will never require more registers than the original program. Okay, but now we have a problem, a conceptual problem, I mean. We are solving in polynomial time a problem that before was proven to be NP-complete. Or not. We know that there must be something wrong going on here. What is it? Would you like to think about this kind of a situation? Well, Chaitan's proof, I mean, that result that showed that register location is NP complete, works for general programs. It does not work in SSA form programs. For instance, let's look into the example that we have used to do Chaitan's demonstration, the program that represents C4, a cycle with four vertices. That's the program. 
However, once we convert this program to SSA form, we can allocate it with three registers. Any of the Chaitons programs can be allocated with three registers, actually. But the thing is that register location and SSA form programs is not the same problem as register location in general programs. We cannot map the results that we obtain in SSA form onto the original program. So we are not really showing that P equals NP, unfortunately. But the fact is that the possibility of doing register location in SSA form programs has opened many venues for research and has inspired the implementation of many register locators all over the world. So, we have seen a bit of what is register location in SSA form programs. In the next class, we start talking about a cornerstone of this technique, chordal graphs.